So why grit? Why grit? Um, last year when I was praying about how I saw 2024, it was like the Lord just said to me, you need grit. You need grit. And I was like, yeah, I know that. Last year was breathe. The theme was breathe, which was really uh, relaxing <laughs> and peaceful. But I just had a sense in my, in my heart and in my spirit that he wants to see his woman push past and push through. You know, it says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need grit. We need passion accompanied with perseverance to push through in Jesus' name, amen? So why grit? Well, there's a scripture in Matthew 15, 21 to 28. We're not gonna put it up. But this is a reason why I felt that this would be uh, a theme, not just a theme, but it would be uh, the motto of our life as women of faith. Uh, it talks about the faith of a Gentile woman, the faith of a Canaanite woman. She inspires me because she was an outsider. How many feel a bit like, I feel like an outsider. I don't feel like I fit in. She was a nuisance. I've been a nuisance at times. I can relate. Yet she had a reason. She had a problem. And she knew that Jesus was the only one that could solve that problem, that could give her the answer. And I want us to be that kind of woman. It's like, even though I feel like an outsider, I feel like a nuisance, all these obstacles, all these things that are flooding in my world, it's like I need to push through. She wasn't arrogant either. She humbled herself even when the disciples didn't want her in the room. So my encouragement to you is stay in the room. Let the Holy Spirit breathe. Even right now, it's like, God, I need you to strengthen me. I need you to strengthen my life. He is the strength of my life. And that's the reason why I'm standing here. That's the reason why you're here. It's like you have grit. Some of you think you don't. But can I say, as Pastor Sam encouraged us last night to choose life. Can we just call it out? I choose Amen. And so this is the reason why I wanted this to be the theme. Now, I've been to a grit class at the gym. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. I think I went at 5.30 in the morning with Lolo Fusitua. We went to Les Mills at one time. <laughs> the one time I was feeling fit. And you know when they, um, they're, they're, they're looking at you? Well, do you know what my trick was? I used to hide behind the, the weight so they couldn't see me, or I would crouch down like that. They'd go, burpees, burpees, and I'm like, no, no. But I'm talking about having spiritual grit. Hey, some of us need that physical grit too, eh? <laughs> it's so funny, the Holy Spirit reminded me, come on, Kathy, you need to get you know, your fitness, you need to improve it, so uh, that might be a word to someone else here too. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. I'm gonna pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, move. Amen. Okay, awesome. The title of my sermon is From Battle Weary to Battle Ready. Last year for me was a year of peace. But can I say I'm declaring war <laughs> this year? Not war on each other, okay? But war on the enemy. I loved what Pastor Hannah said. It's that socket to him. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're sitting here, that you came all the way from where you came from, it's like, yeah, I'm declaring war. Uh, in Proverbs 31, 17, it says, she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. And there's a picture of, um, I just sent a picture to the team. It's a, a lady with a tunic. And uh, whenever I read the, 
the phrase gird, I would say, what does that mean to gird? It means to prepare yourself in the face of opposition. The reason why they would gird their loins, I was saying to the leadership uh, ladies yesterday, I always think loins, you know, I think lamb loins, because they're quite yummy. I never think, you know, the loins. But you gotta gird your loins. And what it means is, when you gird your loins, when you tie up your tunic, it means you can run freely. It means you're prepared. And I just really sense that we all need to prepare ourselves mentally, physically, and emotionally. To gird means to prepare oneself for difficulty or challenge. I just really sense this morning that God wants to strengthen you. Hebrews 12, 12 to 13, he wants to renew your spiritual vitality. It says, therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. I'm not talking just about the elderly, okay? Like my age. (laughs) The feeble knees, who else struggles with jumping, right? I'm like this now. I get scared when Josh or one of the worship leaders is like, jump, jump, jump. I'm like, okay, all right, calm down. <laughs> like, but that's probably why I need physical grit too, you know? So train my knees. Anyway, and uh, yeah, and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated dislocated, but rather be healed. How many of you need strengthening today? I had a picture of, um, I just really wanna pray, even in this moment for mums, and you have children, there's one child or maybe children that you're really concerned about, it's like you've been giving it to the Lord and it's like he wants to strengthen, he wants to strengthen that, you know, you, you may feel weak in that area, but as you stand, I'm gonna get you to stand. We're gonna strengthen you in prayer right now. So if that's you, just stand to your feet. We wanna support you in prayer. Because, you know, they say the most scariest hood to live in is parenthood, motherhood. We need the help of the Holy Spirit, amen? So there are ladies standing up. If you could just, just support them in prayer. Strengthen the hands that hang down. It can be really discouraging when your kids are going through stuff. So Father, right now, strengthen the hands hands that hang down. Strengthen their feeble knees. Lord, I just speak right now hope in Jesus' name to every parent in this room. Hope to your children. God, for a turning around of that situation with their child. Lord, I pray for solutions in Jesus' name. I pray for people to walk into your world that can help. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, I just pray for peace right now where there's been panic. And, Father, I thank you from this moment, Lord, you're going to do a healing I just pray healing for your children in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. For all those diagnoses and and everything that's been spoken over some of the children in this room, it's like, God, we thank you, you're bigger than that. You're bigger than that. And so, Father, I just pray God's solutions in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen, amen, and I pray for testimonies in Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Isaiah 40, 29 says, he gives power to the tired and worn out. I speak power over you, power in you, and strength to your weakness. There's so many things that suck our energy, and there are energy suckers, we're gonna put them on the screen, just have a look. There's just a few few things that we struggle with. Uh, it's going to come up soon. I'm going to read it out. Is it coming up? No? Okay, so many things that can suck your energy. Okay, worrying, energy sucker. How many have been kept up all night just worrying? It doesn't add anything to your life. That was me last night. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but it doesn't. I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me go to sleep. Amen. Okay. Gossip. Staying on social media too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks your energy dry. Negativity. Have you ever been with like someone who's been so negative, eh? And you're just like, oh, I feel like the blood's draining from my head down to my, like, can you stop? But I've been that person too. Sometimes at home, my husband goes, shh, <laughs> stop complaining. I'm like, rah, 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 rah. the cost of living, rah, rah, rah. and he's like, shush, stop complaining. And then I have to remind myself, yeah, that's right. I'm a child of God. Like I can go to the source. Oh, yeah, that's right. Stop complaining, Kathy. Okay. Holding on to the past sucks your energy. A poor diet. Oh, I don't want, I should have deleted that one. Eh? <laughs> but a poor diet does suck your energy. I quit sugar um, last year. Uh, you know, I'm not going to preach about, you know, yeah, stop having sugar. But for me, uh, I did it for health reasons because I was getting joint pain. I was tired all the time. And the doctor suggested, don't you love it when doctors suggest things? But they're actually commanding you, eh? Quit sugar. So anyway, so she said, just try it. And I went, oh, okay. So I quit sugar for maybe nine months, and um, I know, like, because sugar inflames everything in your body, it's, a, it's a inflammatory, so my joint pain left, I know, <laughs> I'm like, why couldn't it be something else, like quit vegetables or something, you know, but it wasn't, so anyway, so I, so Christmas time I decided I'm going to have a dessert, yeah, dessert, just one, because, you know, treat myself, it's Christmas, and so I had a dessert, I had like a cheesecake dessert thing, and I was, oh, I was like, I'll just have one piece, two, three, four, I had five pieces, <laughs> and not just small, it was like massive, massive pieces, and I was so happy that Christmas night, I was like, yeah, and then the sugar hit, my head, I felt like I was hung over. I was like, I can't even open my eyes. And I thought, oh, the pain is not worth it. Should have just had one piece, eh? Like, <laughs> calm down, Kathy, anyway. But that drained the energy. I had to change my diet. So I still will have dark chocolate, just, you know, like, you know, <laughs> 100%, no. <laughs> Tastes like dirt, anyway, no. The joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Amen. But there are certain things up there that drain your energy. They suck the energy out of you dry. It's like those unhealthy relationships. Have you ever advised a friend, right? They're like, oh, my boyfriend, oh, he's toxic, blah, blah. Well, leave him. And then they're like, no, I don't want to. I love him. You're just like, Sucking your energy. <laughs> and if you're in this room and that's you, that someone's given you advice, that's the Lord speaking, not me. Okay? <laughs> Here's a statement. So all those things that suck your energy, don't tolerate what God wants to terminate. Can we just have it up there? Don't tolerate what God wants to terminate. Now, I said to our, our leadership girls yesterday, but Kathy, I'm just being real. I struggle with those things. Yeah, me too. But I don't want it to be a pattern in my life. I don't want those things to rule my life. So I'm not going to tolerate what God wants to terminate. It's like chop it off. There are some things that you've got to do out of love. There are some things that you need to do out of discipline, but don't tolerate what God wants to terminate. See, God wanted health in my life, so I had to make decisions where I had to say, okay, I'm, I'm no longer gonna eat like that again. It's like I wanna be healthy. With worry, it's like when I lean towards worry and fear, 
And so the Lord goes, I'm, not, I'm terminating that out of your life. It's ruling over you. I started pro- to project fear onto my children. You know, as a parent, like, I would project my own fears. I remember not having friends at school. I would um, think, oh, my kids aren't going to have friends at school. But that was my own life, and I, that was my own fear, and I was projecting that onto my kids. There were so many things I was projecting onto them, and the Lord was like, hey, that's not a them thing, it's you. I love this quote from Pastor Carl Brockbank. I was looking at his Instagram. I wasn't scrolling for ages, okay? So just to let you, keep me accountable, anyway. Uh, He put a quote on here and it says, offense is an event, but living offended is a choice. So you may do something one time, but you don't need to choose to live in that. Choose life. I love that word last night. It's like offense is an event, like it happened. But let's move forward, let's move on, let's be gritty woman. It's like, no, 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 that happened then, but I'm not gonna grab that event and make it my life. I'm not gonna live that out and make it part of my story. And so the Lord wants you to live a full life. We're not victims. We're not victims. We are the head and not the tail. We are overcomers. That's what the Word of God says. So gird up your mind. Gird up, it's like prepare, prepare your mind for margin. Gird up your mind. Make sure there's space for you to think, to breathe. Gird up your mind. In 1 Peter 1.13, it says, so prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert, Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Prepare your mind. Be awake, be alert. It's like girding up those things that that distract you. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself against the true knowledge of God taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Every negative thought, you're going to jail. Every thought that I think negatively about myself, you're going to jail. It's like I take every thought captive, you're going to jail. So every time you lean towards fear, jail. You don't belong in my mind. My mind needs margin, it needs space, it needs imagination, time to dream. So if you're in this room and you've had a busy mind, I want you to stand up because I want to pray for you right now. Because there's been an attack on our minds. All these distracting thoughts, it's like, get out in Jesus' name. Every negative thought, every thought of fear, every thought of worry, every thought of like people pleasing. Did I say that right to that person? Doesn't matter. Take it to jail. So right now I want you to close your eyes, lift up your hands because I want to strengthen you in prayer. I'm going to strengthen those hands that hang down. The feeble needs strengthened right now. So if you're sitting down, I want you to stretch out your hands. Every woman standing up. Thank you, Father. We just declare freedom over every mind in this room. Every thought that is not of you, we send to jail in Jesus' name. We, we, we take it captive and we chuck it out in Jesus' name. And I speak the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb over every mind. Every thought that has been tormenting you out in Jesus' name. Every memory removed, erased in Jesus' name. I pray release a miracle in that area, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, receive His peace. Receive His peace over your mind. Just put your hand over your head. Peace in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Amen. Wasn't that good? I chucked out a few things. I sent them to jail. Threw away the key. Okay. Gird up your mind and gird up your heart. Ah, the heart. The heart does go on. Near, far, wherever you are. Okay. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your affections, for they influence everything else in your life. Guard your affections. If you're like me, I'm an open book, and I, love, I, I just open up to, you know, everyone. It's like, but the Lord had to teach me, Kathy, you need to guard your heart. You need to guard those things that are sacred to him. And I'd be like, oh, but everyone's so amazing. No. <laughs> everyone has issues in their heart. I do. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and is extremely sick. Who, is, who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? Those secret motives in your heart. You know when you think you're doing the right thing? The other day, someone had messaged me about something and I was like, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I, I had to be the bigger person. Anyway, so I was like, I said something like, oh, yeah, awesome, that's great. And um, they're from another church. And I was like, cool, I'm cheering you on, you know, and all that. But I was like, are you, Kathy? You know? You know when you have to check your heart? And it was like God was saying to me, check, check this, guard this. Mean what you say, but don't say it mean, right? So I was like, Holy Spirit, can you just guard my heart? Those secret things, it's like, you know when envy starts to creep out? I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like, get, get down, go to jail, go to jail. But I do recognize those things because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me and the Holy Spirit produces fruit. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control. All those things, I'm like, I need everything. I need all of it. Holy Spirit, can you help me produce love? Can you help me produce peace? I don't want to be that envious person. I've been that jealous person before, and I don't want to go there. She's in jail. I don't even know her name, you know? Get out. It's like, I've been there before, and when it creeps in, it's like, Jealousy is calling out. No, you're not good enough. Or I'm better than you. It's like all those things that are calling out to you, it's like guard your heart. It's funny, it's like those things are in jail, but you've got a guard. <laughs> it's like a security guard. It's a security guard of peace and love protecting your heart. It's like, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit, you're guarding my heart. Gird up your prayer life. I just want to encourage you. Like, I never thought I was a good prayer. And that was such a lie that I agreed with. It was a thought. It was a thought that I played with. I was like, yeah, I'm not a prayer. Because, you know, those prayers, they look spiritual. They always have their eyes closed all the time. <laughs> no, they don't. But, you know, you think people that pray have a certain look. And... The reason why women's ministry is awesome <laughs> is as a young girl, I, I needed a healthy, a healthy role model of a woman in front of me. This is why you are needed in this room. For people that go, for women who say, I don't like women's ministry, I don't like women. Well, you don't like yourself. <laughs> like you're a woman. And if you're a new creation in Christ, love God, love people. You love people. And you gotta check your heart. It's like, why don't I like other women? Is it because that time in primary school? Is it because that time in high school? The popular girl, you know, it's like, was it that time when your mother did, or was it that time when your sister? And it's like, there are things that are trigger points and it's like, 
no, no, no. That needs to go to jail too. I am not going to tolerate what God wants to terminate. And he wants to terminate unhealthy competition. He wants to terminate all those kind of lies. So if you come up to me and you say that, I'm sorry, you're going to jail. <laughs> no. no, you're not. Just kidding. Anyway, but you know what I mean. I used to say that when I was younger. I'd be like, oh, I don't like this fluffy woman stuff. Be yourself. You are who you are. Be yourself. If you're not fluffy, don't be fluffy. If you are, cool. But be yourself. Because the younger generation need to see you succeed and be healthy. They need to see someone who is going 100% for the Lord. Gird yourself up in prayer. Psalm 112 says, Verse seven, they do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. When you're girding up in prayer, you prepare for the worst, but believe for the best. And so I've had to ask the Holy Spirit, when I'm praying, can you help me see around the corner, please? When I'm on my knees, when I'm praying for a woman's conference, it's not just for a day. I am praying for you like weekly. It's like we get together as a prayer team and we're praying for you. This isn't just a gathering just for today. We've been preparing for a year on our knees, praying for you, praying for transformation, believing for God to move in your family, believing for God to transform your hearts and your lives. That's what we pray about. We pray that God would strengthen you he would strengthen your spine. It's like, God, can you just do something to our woman? Can you just show them how much you love them? I need that. You need that. It's a lie if you think you don't. We need each other. So gird yourself up in prayer. Why do I want to uh, go on about this point is because when I've had tough times in my life, what do I do? Get on my knees. Gird myself up, prepare myself for the worst. It's like I prepare myself for the worst, I can believe for the best because I know the Holy Spirit is close. He's close to the brokenhearted. He's close to those who are humble. I can't do life without the Holy Spirit. We need the power and the love and the strength of the Holy Spirit from the back to the front, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I remember when, you know, my husband's been diagnosed with two incurable diseases. Like if he had to win a competition over like, who has the most sicknesses, he has. I'm like, well, compared to me, I'm like, you know, I just stub my toe or, you know, maybe menopause. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a disease? It's not A, anyway. <laughs> Is there a doctor in the place? Can you confirm? <laughs> confirm or deny if it is anyway. Sorry, guys, if you're listening. Too much information, right? <laughs> Block your ears. Guard your ears. Gird up your prayer life. And so I remember there was a moment in a time in my life where everything I was doing in my own strength wasn't working. I was a young mum. I had a toddler and a baby. And those are the times where you can make a choice to either break down or break through in prayer. And so I got on my knees and I was a mess. And I said, God, I know you can make a mess out of, uh, make a miracle out of this mess, but I really need you. And I remember when he was rushed to hospital the first time, I was in Tauranga and um, I remember driving to the beach. I had my kids in the car. And I was just like, whoa, I'm, I'm alone. And you remember those key moments because that's when the power of prayer kicked in. I had to prepare myself for the worst, but believe for the best. I was like, God, even if you don't heal him, 
I will follow you, even if you don't heal him. And I had to pray that prayer. I had to pray that prayer because God, as I gird up my mind, I was thinking the worst. I was making up scenarios. I had to gird my mind. I had to take every thought captive. I had to guard my heart. It was like I was grieving before I needed to grieve. And so I had to guard my heart and then gird up in prayer. This stuff is real. It's like, okay, so Holy Spirit, I speak life over my husband. I speak life over him even if I still speak life over him. And so I would pray. My prayer life went from zero to 100. It was like, okay. And because it wasn't the results or the, the answers, it was like I was in the presence of God. And all I could do was praise him. I can't remember what I sung, but you know, we sang that song, so I throw up my hands, praise you again and again, because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, because I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Set for a heart singing. Hallelujah. And when you're, when you're alone, it's like, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Because you've got a lion in. Get up and praise. Come on, let's get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, because you've got a lion in, get up and praise, sorry if I'm singing off key online, but I don't care, come on, my soul, oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, you need breakthrough right now. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. You want to say it one more time? Come on, my soul. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Hey. 
Holy Spirit, just strengthen every woman in the room. There are some people in this room, you've been battle weary, you're tired. You are so tired, it's like you can't hardly open your eyes. And if that's you in the room, I want you to lift your hands. Yep, awesome. Come on, if you can see every hand lifted here, just support them in prayer. There are women with their hands lifted. If you're not, if you're worshiping, you can put your hands down. We just want to support those in prayer that are battle weary, because we want you to be battle ready in Jesus' name. So Father, we strengthen every hand that hangs down, every head that bows down, that's discouraged. I speak hope in Jesus' name. Courage right now, put courage in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak life into those death situations. God, we speak life hope in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Strengthen, strengthen every life, every heart, every mind. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.